Hello everyone, welcome. Today we're talking about Baldur's Gate 3 again. Specific about the can't be spell list from the wizard and the sorcerer classes. In Baldur's Gate 3, we have the option to choose from 13 different cantrips. Being a wizard or a sorcerer, the exact same 13 cantrips. So let's review all of them, shall we? All right, now it's time to demonstrate Acid Splash. Acid Splash, Acid Splash is a spell, an area spell, area cantrip, is the only cantrip in the game that affects an area of effect, and that's a nice area as you can see. And you throw it, and the enemies will make a dexterity in If they fail, they take the damage. So they both failed, and they both took 1d6 damage, that's 3 damage, which is pretty good. As you can see, sometimes it's worth using it. So now we're going to demonstrate Blade Ward. Blade Ward gives you resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage from weapon attacks. That means the damage is halved. When you cast it, it will save the last for two turns, but that's just a lie. Last for one turn only, because by the end of your next turn, it will be finished. So kind of like one turn. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can make this guy attack us. Yes, it did. So as you can see here, it rolled 4 on the d6, but then with resistance, I took 2 less damage. So yeah, sometimes I don't like Blade Ward, but sometimes it might be in a peak when it might feel like casting instead of dashing, or then or something like that. Uh, it can have its use, uses, you can pretty much make someone tank a big guy, so yeah. Okay, for the next kind of we have Chill Touch. Magic. Two thirds a nice range attack, same range as all the other cantrips, so that's 18 meters. 1d8 necrotic, necrotic damage, but there's a nice thing going around it. First, if you hit someone, they can't be healed for one turn. So just hit this guy, so he might go and try to heal himself, but he can't. See? No hit points, because he still had the debuff. So that's nice against regenerating creatures, if someone has clerics on their party, or something like that. But the best thing about yes. Chill Touch is to be used against Undead. Undead have disadvantage on attack rolls if you hit them. So if, if my bot here was an Undead and I hit him, now he would have disadvantage on all attack rolls on his turn. And if you're talking about fighting a big Undead with multiple attacks, that's huge. That's fairly strong. So yeah, go ahead and use Chill Touch against Undead. It's just that good. And now for the next country, Dancing Light. So human characters and other races without dark vision, they won't be able to see very well when it's dark. So we can see this kind of a dark area, so I can see very well. There is some light, so we're not blind here, but still not very well. So if you cast Dancing Light, now as you can see, it's illuminating it, which is nice, I guess. And uh, diff difference from oh, light and describes. Dancing Light, light you need to cast on someone to next to you. Dancing Light, you could be in the midst of a battle and then you just can't cast Dancing Light farther away. And then you hit people. Um, as you can see here, the target is obscured. That means he's kind of like a dark area, so I have disadvantage. If I had dancing lights here, keep in mind this, and dancing lights will take my action. But if I like, had dancing lights here, the target wouldn't be obscured anymore. So I would be able to hit him without a problem. Now, with dancing lights here, when I try to attack him, See, not no disadvantage anymore, not obscured anymore. So you can do this from far away. So that's the advantage of dancing lights over light. Galactius. And a critical hit or fire bolt. Apart from the one d one d ten damaging spell that you have, so that's the biggest, uh, the highest damage cantrip that you can throw from afar in Baldur's Gate Three. Uh, it also has a perk that it ignites stuff. So. For example, oil says flammable. So if you fireball the oil, yeah, not a big boom. And we know the barrel mancing is a thing in Baldur's Gate and Divinity. You can find lots of oil barrels to go around and ignite stuff. So yeah, use it with your own creativity. And it's nice to explode enemies from afar. Ah, you can also use it to, uh, to light stuff from afar. So let's say. This one would be unlit, and you're have like having problems to hit some enemy who is far away. Maybe a rogue can sneak attack because of the dark. You could use fire bows to ignite it. Ignite. Far. 
and now be able to attack easily. So yeah, keep in mind, um, as like Divinity, Larian wants you to use your powers to maximum, interacting with the scenario. And now let's demonstrate the friend's so cantrip. Using will because we will have access to it as sorcerer and wizards do. Oi, the wall, the wall also has an access to it. We're doing the absolute's work. State your business now. The mark glows, but you feel nothing in response. Your illithid power is beyond reach until you rest. Yeah, so that's why we're going to lie. We have an audience with the one in charge. And we can add our friend bonus from Will. And let's have guidance from Shadow Heart. So friends will give us advantage on the task. So that's huge. As I can't be give you, giving us advantage on any charisma based checks. That's incredible. It lasts for 10 turns. So keep that in mind. There's no saving throw. We just use it and we have advantage. So yeah. Because of the friends, we got the 19th, not the one. So we will pretty much warm. Right. Well, you ain't the first foreign type, I suppose. Hmm. Yeah. Gonna have to be a bit more specific, though, mate. Absolute's got a few favorites around here. Right? It's just. You here to see Priestess Gut, Boss Ragslin, or the Drow? <laughs> the goblin with the hands. Uh, yeah, the gut. Do you now? Might feel different once she puts a burning brand here. She's through the main doors. Just follow the smell of burnt goblin arse. <laughs> Alright. So, the thing is, to give you mind, we cost friends, oh, right? Now. now just having a bit of fun. Is here. So it lasts so for 10 turns. But the, the spell says that once the spell ends, the creature knows it or charm and might accuse the spellcaster. So sometimes if you do it and you linger around too much, they will accuse you. And we don't want that. But well, we know it will end once the guidance ends because they were cast at the same time. They will all. Friends and guidance will last for a minute. So let's see if, if this one will accuse us. Or now we can look at us. We could yeah, click here and okay, we it broke the concentration. Have we can you do an that. Enemy and a fight. If, if I was here, I, I broke the concentration on purpose, but it, it's the same as I would just wait it out. But if I would just go and cross the door and mind my own business, then it would be all right. So if you're going to use this spell, mind it. Use once you know you're going to be leaving the areas. Now for the frost bolt. When you see it, it looks like just a counter that does 1d8 cold damage, less than a fire bolt that does 1d10. But frost bolt has two things going for it. The first one is what Sag says there. It takes away 3 meters of the character movement speed when you hit it. That's very good, that's one third of a regular move speed for a character. Yeah, some will have 40, some will have 50, but I think 30 feet of speed is kind of like the average. So that's pretty good. And the second one is a hidden stuff. If you actually do that, you can see water, surface, thousands of unprotected flames can be electrified or frozen. So this is wet, so you can actually freeze this. So, but we are going to do that. But first, we are going to hit this guy. We can move here, Gayo. Now I have 91% to do it. Let's do it. Combat will start. You sort of fight, and now you have one. Yeah. Uh, not nice. The shield being. Right. So right. So these guys are all on the frozen surface now. So let's see what happens with them. All right. So I spent one action to cast a can. These guys are going to shoot at us, so that's fine. That's fine. We just want to see the results of our. Wait, wait. It's not frozen. All right, all right. Not frozen. Wait, 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 wait. I think the cutscene made it not frozen. So now it's a frozen surface. That's all right. Let's go. Yeah, 
We don't care about these guys out of out of the ice. So look, prone dash dash. So with one action to make this stuff uh, the water wet, we actually made one guy drop, and we made two guys uh, use their actions to dash. So that that's major. If you can do that. That's major. And you, you can actually do that, but you can actually force your way. You could use a cleric to create some water on people and then freeze stuff. It can be worth maybe sometimes. Light cantrip. So some races do not have dark vision. That means they kind of suck at seeing things in the dark. And even areas that are like that, that's like, I think, imagine that's a low light area. So if you were to start a fight here right now, probably I would have disadvantage at attacking people because not enough light around. And, and then you can see, look how dark it is. So that's not a very dark area because there are some natural lights going on, even though not enough. But once you cast light, it's a cantrip, that lasts 100 turns, there's no concentration, so just, just have it all the time. Look how clear it gets. So that's a daylight area because that's kind of like no, it's, I know it's not daylight, but it's kind of daylight area. So now you can actually just discern much more details, and you wouldn't have any problem fighting here. And it's good for exploration if you want to wander around with humans, not like race like elves or dwarves who have dark vision. All right, we're going to show the mage hand. You can use the hand out of combat. Uh, when it's soon to enter, and then you can just join combat, the mage will be there, the mage hand. Um, so, what does a mage hand do? You can see it has its initiative order, so to act there, and then it will be relevant when it comes. So, let's just pass this turn. They did not because they're surprised. This, this path lays down turn. So, the mage hand now you can move. It's a little bit far away from the imp, so you won't be able to do much, but it could it can move, it can shove stuff, it could throw objects around, it does not have anything to throw now, or it could even attack if it was in range. Look how nice the animation is. Well let's give the hand one more turn. Alright, you see, it also can absorb damage, so the ink spent an action to attack the hand, and the hand took one damage. That's fine. So the hand comes here, you can attack it with the action. It is a one damage, yeah, that's a very small damage, but so what? And also, look, the imp in Z melee with my sorcerer. We can try as a bonus action to shove the imp farther away, and I was able to. Now, with my saucer's turn, I can move around without him taking a potential attack. So, it's actually a nice cantrip to have. It is a concentration spell, though. So, if you take damage, you might lose it. And you can have other concentration spells. So, keep that in mind. But it's a nice cantrip. It's a nice bonus. If, you do not if you're not thinking about concentrate anything, why not cast one and then join battle? Now, for minor illusion cantrip, the best use is to cast and attract people, NPCs, or maybe enemies to an area, and then you AO with them. And our high elves will have um, minor illusion, even if they are not wizards. So in minor illusion, and they start going, you can cast another one just to make sure they're going. See, another one, then you can, come on, one more, one more. There, you cast, and now they are there, like, looking, and then you come and thunder wave them. Stuff like that. Okay, now we're going to use Poison Spray. It is a melee spell, basically a melee spell, 3 meters, so yeah. And the target will make a constitution saving throw. It fails, it takes damage. So let's use on this one that has more life. Not exactly melee, because it's 3 meters, but almost melee. <laughs> By the way, she says veneno, that means poison in Portuguese. So uh, we did it. As you can see, the target made a saving throw, it failed here, and it took 2 damage. It's 1d12 damage, so it's the highest damage cantrip in the game, apart from um, Eldritch Blast with the proper invocation from Warlocks. But yeah, it failed the saving throw, but it took only 2 damage off of 1d12. 
And now let's demonstrate Shocking Grasp. You can use it as a melee attack cantrip. So if someone's close to you, use it on them. They will take 1d8 damage if you hit. And they will have, they will lose a reaction. Meaning you can run away without taking opportunity attack. Also, you have advantage if they, wear, if they are wearing and meta armor. So that makes it pretty easy to hit armored class fighters, right? But if they are standing on a surface that's wet, as you can see here, there is water here. These two tieflings are standing on it. You can actually target the surface. So, like that. Now, I did damage to both of them, as you can see. As you see it here, they took 1d4 lightning damage, both of them. They are also vulnerable to lightning. Because if you look, examine, examine them. So they are wet, wet prevented, for, they can't burn. They resist to fire damage, which tieflings are already, but they, have, they are vulnerable to lightning and cold damage. And electric, electrocuted. They take 1d4 lightning at the start of each turn because they are on a surface that is like electric. But since they are vulnerable to it, they take actually 2d4. Well, that's, that's pretty strong, especially if you ray on them now with electric attacks. Nice, huh? So now let's the next. So they took damage, 8 damage, as you can see. That's a lot of damage. And you can actually have a big area. I cast a spell, um, Great Water. But let's say we have many goblins or many enemies here. And actually, you tons of damage of two actions and so yeah that's pretty nice and now well we always just going to show this guy or not trying to show with eldritch blast or not let's pass the turn she took damage yeah pretty nice can i would say pretty pretty nice can and once the, the stuff is electrocuted, you can actually send them back in again. I will send Gale also, but screw Gale. And they take the damage again, so the first stuff is there, dealing damage all the time. So pretty neat. Through strike, and make so, make so your next attack against a target will have advantage. It's not very good, it's actually a bad counter. But if you want to use it, if you must use it, the best way to use it is before you enter combat. So you can actually do strike someone and then attack the person. Uh, that's for when you couldn't stealth, right? Because if you go, if you go away and you stealth and you attack the person, you have advantage. But here you can do without the stealth. Let's say every, NPCs everywhere, maybe the goblin camp. See, the ogre won't be my enemy, and now I can open with an advantage strike against him. Takes a fight. The consequences are hardly surprising. <laughs> nice. And that's it. But I don't recommend using it. Hardly good. Even when you can't don't have a good turn, I don't know. I don't recommend it. And that's what we eat for Wizard and Sorcerer's Canterpiece Guide, guys. Please leave a comment and tell us what you want to see next. And if you like the video, like the video. And please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much and see ya.